she's making headlines this week. Hillary Clinton. All eyes on her, that is for sure. The former Secretary of State expected to launch her second bid for the White House tomorrow with a video message. She's doing it online. It's expected on social media. She will then immediately hit the road. She'll go to the state where her 2008 campaign ran aground, Iowa, where she came in third. CNN correspondent Sunlin Safardi has her story. A new version of Hillary Clinton when she hits the campaign trail. Less of this. Thank you so much. And more of this. Looking forward to coming and uh, having a conversation with uh, a few people. The campaign's expected new strategy placed Clinton in smaller, more intimate settings, intended to try to highlight her softer side, aid say. Thank you. And avoid the perception of inevitability that dogged her and led to her defeat in 2008. Good to see you. Central to that new pitch, a focus on Hillary Clinton, the person. She's aiming to reintroduce herself, not as a former first lady, not as a former senator or secretary of state, but as a grandmother. I have to say, I am still kind of in the grandmother glow. Uh, six months in, it's better than a spa treatment. I highly recommend it. And I suppose it's only fair to say, don't you someday want to see a woman president of the United States of America? She's already coming in bruised. Controversy still swirls over her use of a private email server while Secretary of State. Looking back, it would have been better for me to use two separate phones and two email accounts. I thought using one device would be simpler. And obviously, it hasn't worked out that way. And her trustworthiness has taken a hit. A Quinnipiac poll out this week from the crucial swing states of Iowa, Virginia, and Colorado show more voters believe she is not honest. Hello, everyone. An area of vulnerability Republican candidates have already pounced on. The question here is, are they skirting election law? Are they taking money and potentially getting influence bought? by foreign countries through a foundation. It is unseemly. <laughs> Sutherland joins me now from Washington. All right, so we know she's going to roll this out on video. We don't know what time, but everyone's on pins and needles waiting at some point tomorrow. Some people have said that this, you know, doing it this way on social media through a tape video sort of exerts ultimate control. Is that the strategy here? Well, that's absolutely what a lot of analysts have been pointing out, Poppy, that it really is her taking control of the message and certainly something that is important in the first days of the campaign. I want to also point out one important thing that's happening at this hour in Clinton world, uh, the Ready for Hillary event. This could be, you're looking at live picture right this, there. This is the grassroots group that was formed uh, in 2013 to encourage. Hillary Clinton to run for president. This could be one of their last gatherings in New York right now. A lot of those people will turn Poppy into senior members of her campaign. He also, she'll want to harness all this energy, excitement that this grassroots group had over the course of the last two years as she runs for president. You know, also this issue and question about inevitability comes up, right? You've got former Governor of Maryland, Martin O'Malley, who may also make a bid for the White House. You know, not directly criticizing Clinton, but saying, you're in, it's inevitable until it's not. That's right, and that was interesting coming from O'Malley last night. I think there's an awareness in the Cl Hillary Clinton campaign about this issue of inevitability. It's one that seems to always keep coming up, and one of the reasons that we might see Clinton making this sort of low-key announcement, low-key rollout to her campaign, and then get right back out to the campaign to say, aides say that she wants to show that she's taking nothing for granted this time, but no doubt the issue will continue to dog her. And as you said, one of the potential contenders in the Democratic primary, Democratic Governor of Mar uh, Maryland, and former govern, governor of Maryland, Martin O'Malley. He was in Iowa last night. This is what he told reporters. History is full of examples where the inevitable front runner was inevitable right up until she was no longer, or he was no longer inevitable. And the challenger emerges very oftentimes here in Iowa. And so uh, that's why Iowa is such an important state. And O'Malley says that Democrats expect what he calls a robust conversation, and he says that conversation needs to happen in this Democratic primary. Poppy. Of course, everyone's